Hey guys, I'm going to walk through the process of how you can connect a funnel in lead pages over to Zapier. That way you can set up some automation for your follow-up. Um, but right now I'm going to dive into how you can set this up for that automation of your lead follow-up. So let's just dive into one of these funnels real quick. I'm going to click into this one up here, this OG 20K. So let's just click in there real quick. Let that load. And then now I'm going to go over here and click into this box for the form. You can see right up here, it gives you an option for edit integration. So I'm just hovering over this and it gives me this option here. I'm going to go ahead and click into edit integrations. And then you can see over here off to the side, uh, it gives you the form name. Best practice, I'm going to give it a, an actual form name in here because I don't like how it's that default form with the, the date and time that this was actually created. So let's just call this, this is what the, the OG uh, 20K funnel. And the reason why I want to give it that name is because this form name is going to show up over in Zapier when I go to set this up. And I'm going to have a drop down in there and I want to make sure that I'm using the right form. So this will be beneficial for me to have this named properly over there. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to go ahead and click into where it says add an integration. You can see that they've already connected uh, added active campaign into this. So let's go ahead and click into add an integration in here and let's just uh, click on more services. This is where we're going to set this up for Zapier. So if we just scroll down through here, we can see uh, we've got Zapier listed down here. So I'm going to go ahead and select webhooks by Zapier and go ahead and click on post or use this Zap. And then it's going to pop up this window here and it's going to give you the option to go ahead and start creating this Zap in here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and rename this. I don't like using uh, the name that uh, Lead Pages automatically puts in here. I want to give this the, the funnel name in here. So let's just call this OG20K. And then we're going to say that this is lead pages to uh, Chirpily follow up campaign. And I like to name it in the title of my zaps whenever I'm setting these up. I like to give it a, a descriptive name in terms of like what applications are being used uh, for a particular campaign in terms of it going from lead pages over to Chirpily. And I want to give it the actual name of that funnel in there too. That way, you know, six months later or, or uh, three months later, whatever, if I go in there, if the client goes in there, um, they know exactly which one of these zaps pertains to this particular funnel and this particular campaign. So let's go ahead and go into the next step here. So you can see that uh, Zapier automatically pre-populates in here the trigger step, which is the lead pages. So when a new form submission goes to that lead page, this is going to trigger this zap. So I'm going to go ahead and click into choose an account. I only have one account. Um, set up uh, through Zapier for this Zapier account. So let's just click into lead pages. If I had uh, a bunch of different clients set up through this Zapier account, you'd see um, those all set up in there for different lead pages accounts. So let's go ahead and click in here. Let's click into continue. And then you can see up here at the top for the form, it's automatically going to find this OG 20K funnel. It says, do not change this. Don't change it. Uh, but if it had been that you know form November 28th, 2020, 4.15 p.m. or something like that. I'd have no idea if that was actually the, the right funnel, but I, I want to make sure that it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and click continue. And the next step is we've got to test the trigger. You always got to test the trigger whenever you're setting up a new Zap. So you can see there's some sample data. Uh, let's go ahead and click on continue here. I'm actually going to go ahead and submit um, some other data before I, I click on continue here because I don't like this. This is, this is uh, sample data that lead page is sent through if someone hasn't gone through the funnel yet. So let's go ahead and go through that funnel real quick. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and X out of this because this is already set up over in lead pages. I want to go ahead and um, I'll come back to this here in a second. I'm going to go ahead and open this up in a new tab. And let's see here. So we're in the preview mode here. So let's just put in here, Chris, and then test at Okay, and we'll leave that country code there and let's just put in there. Uh, if I put in all ones, I think it's gonna come back. I think lead pages is smart enough to bounce back and say that that's not a legit phone number. So I'm just gonna put in here something that looks legit. Okay, let's go to the next page here. Got that submitted. Let's go back over to Zapier. I'm gonna go find that new Zap that's been set up. So let's see, let's go back to the dashboard. I could go back, so I can find the, the Zap in one of two spots, right? I could go back to the funnel and start there, or I could go into Zapier and locate that Zap that's already started to be created here. So let's see, it's right down here. It says OG 20K lead page 
to directly follow up. So I can go in there and edit it, and I'll show you how you can find this back over here. So if we click back into Edit Integrations, we can see it's started in here. So I could go in here and edit it. Um, I'm a fan of just doing it back in Zapier, so I'm going to hop on over there. So I'm not going to edit it over here. I'm just going to keep editing back over here in Zapier. So let's go ahead and click into that Zap that we're working on here. Okay, and next step, uh, let's go back to that trigger step. Let's pull in that sample data that I had just set up. So let's just refresh the fields real quick. Let's go to test trigger and click into form submission A right here. This is going to allow us to load more data. So there we go. So submission B is that data that I just submitted through. So that's the actual data that I want to use because it has more information here. It has the phone number, email, and first name. If I had not done that, if I had just relied on the, the sample data that lead pages had pushed through whenever someone hadn't gone through this funnel yet, you can see right here, I only have this email and I want all the information for this funnel, for this uh, zap to actually be set up properly. So let's go ahead and click on continue. Okay, so uh, whenever I had set up the integration between lead pages and Zapier uh, before, uh, it automatically set up my second step here, the action step, as being a post webhook for Zapier. And that's because I had selected, there was a big array of different options in uh, lead pages where I could set up different integrations. When I went down to the bottom where it had Zapier, there was a bunch of different Zapier options. One of them was webhooks by Zapier. That's the one I wanted to use. So that's why it already pre-populated in here. Sometimes when you're setting up a Zap, um, you'll, you'll find that uh, you have to actually go in and search for a Zap. Um, now, one quick thing though. Um, I have found that when I've connected data over to Chirply, sometimes I need to pre-format or reformat data for it to be able to flow into Chirply and operate properly. And that's not just a Chirply thing. That is something that you'll find in different applications. Sometimes phone numbers need to be formatted a certain way. So let's go ahead and dive into that real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click into this little plus symbol. It's going to allow me to add in a new step in between the trigger step and this post step here. So let's go ahead and click into that. And we're going to search for, actually, I don't even have to search. It's right over here off to the side. I'm going to use this format option. If you didn't see that off to the side, you could just search over here for format. So let's click into format and action event. So let's change this. So what I'm looking for here is I want to change the phone number. So let's click into phone numbers, click in continue. And now in the transform step here where it says choose value, let's click there. And then I'm going to format a phone number. So I want this phone number to be formatted just a certain way. So now I've got to find the input. The input is the data that would be coming in from a previous step. In this case, it's that trigger step that had that data we had from uh, lead pages. Now you can see right here, the phone number, this value here that lead pages sends over, it doesn't look like a phone number that you're used to seeing. And that's why I have to format that for Chirply for, for this to work properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into phone number here. So now what this is doing basically, this is taking the format step and it's gonna reformat that phone number and then spit it off to Chirply in a format that Chirply wants. So I need to find the correct format that this needs to be uh, selected for. So let's go ahead and click into choose value. And I'm gonna scroll all the way down through here. Now in this case, I want no symbols national. Now you might wonder like, well, okay, Chris, how do you know which one of these options to use? Sometimes you just kind of have to play around with it, try to figure out which one it's gonna be. Um, in this case, I've used Chirply enough to know that what it needs is no symbols national, uh, or you could use no symbols international. I'm gonna go ahead and select no symbols national because these are all gonna be US based. And you can see right here that the default phone number country code is US. I'm gonna leave it as US. And then let's uh, let's keep validate phone number as set to yes. So that's going to look to see if it looks like it's a legit phone number. Okay, let's go ahead and click in continue. And let's test and review. And then it should spit out uh, a phone number down here. Okay, so then let's go ahead and let's go on to the next step. The next step is, uh, let's see, I want to split out the, the person's name. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So let's go back into format real quick. And for this option, we're going to click under action event, search and uh, select. Let's click on text. Let's click on continue. Transform, the option we're going to select here, it's going to be, we want to split text. So I could, could search down through here and see all the different options, but I know that this is be split text. So what I'm looking to do here now in this format or step is, uh, the lead, whenever they had submitted their information through the funnel, it was one name field and they could put in, you know, John Smith or John W. Smith, or they could just put in John, or they could put John Wayne Smith, Wilkes Booth or something like that, right? 
I want to split up their name. That way I can have a first name and a last name. That way when Chirply sends out the follow-up, we can have personalized follow-up that do, this goes out to John instead of having it look funky where it says like John Wayne Smith Wilkes Booth or something crazy like that. No one ever actually calls someone by their full name like that. So that's why I want to split this name up. So I got split text listed here for the transform step. Now I got to find the input value. So let's go back up here. Again, we want to get this from a previous step and it's going to be the data that we're pulling in from lead pages. So click into this lead pages option right here. And then let's click into this. Actually, if you needed to, you could click on show all options to see all the information. But in this case, there's only a, a couple values. And then of course, lead pages submits uh, like a timestamp and then a unique ID, which means nothing to URI. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and click into it. See where it says first name here. Now I know that I only put my name in there, but you know, someone could be going through this funnel and putting their full name in there. So let's just, let's always default to trying to find whatever it looks like lead page is sent through for a name field. Okay, let's go ahead and click on the next option here, separator. You can see right down here, you've got different, you, you could put in this option right here. The default is, so I'm just gonna copy that instead of typing it out. Uh, I wanna split this up by spaces. Now I can't go in and just put, I can't go into the separator field and just put a space. Like I can't, can't go on my keyboard and hit space. That's not actually going to indicate to the formatter in terms of how to split it up by spaces. I have to use this funky little uh, string of characters right here. You can see right here where under separator it says character or word separator to split the text on. The default is, and then you can see right there. So I just copied that and pasted it in there. And then if you needed to find what other um, weird uh, separator strings, you'd click through this link here and find out what Zapier might be looking for. If it was something like a, a comma or something like that, you could simply just put in a comma. Okay, so next option, segment index. So let's click into choose value. And I want to use all as separate fields. So let's click, click on that. And what that's going to do is it's going to separate all of the, the names, split by spaces, all the names into different rows, essentially. So let's go ahead and click into continue and test and review. And then you can see in this case, there's item one. If I put in you know, Chris McCoy or something like that, there'd be item one and then item two. Okay, let's go ahead and let's click. Uh, that's fine how that was. Let's go ahead and click into the next option here. So I don't actually want this to be a post. Uh, what I'm gonna do here instead is I'm gonna change this. So I can click into the three dots that are over here off to the side and uh, sorry, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click right here where it says choose app and event. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change this. So click in there and change that. And I'm gonna use Chirply. Uh, if whatever app you're looking for isn't displayed up here, these are just showing some of the most common apps I've been using recently. But if, if you don't see the, the app you need uh, to, to set up this step for, then you would just click right into the search apps field and you would search for it. So you could do a search like this, right? Okay, so let's click in there. Action event. So in this case, and what I'm setting up here now for Chirply, you're probably not using Chirply, you're probably using something else. Maybe you use an active campaign, Infusionsoft, um, uh, ConvertKit or something else like that. So this step is gonna be a little different for you. So you'll need to actually go in and look at Zapier's help documents for how to set up this next step. But this might help give you an idea of what this might look like. So basically I wanna sync these leads over to Chirply before I can do anything else. So let's go ahead and click on sync leads, click on continue choose an account and it's going to be that account there. So I've got a couple different Chirply accounts. So let's click and continue there. And now I could have multiple lists in this Chirply account. In this case, I think I only have, uh, there's just two in here. So let's put it in this one right here. This is uh, like the clients list here and then campaign name. So I might have several different campaigns set up in Chirply. I've just got this one for this one client. So let's click into there. And then um, let's put in the phone number. So this is where we're going to use the formatted phone number where I had gotten uh, it and extracted it up here. I'm not going to use it from lead pages because I need the actual formatted number. So let's click into numbers here. Click in the phone number there and email ID. Uh, we're going to use lead pages data right here because it was fine. I didn't need to reformat or anything like that. Let's click that. And then first name. So you can see here, this is the power of why I uh, have those uh, this is the power behind why I have those those field names split up for the name because I wanted to put if it was a first name if it was a last name so forth so let's click in here let's go to text let's put output item one now for me to be able to put in the last name you know what I need to actually go back and submit another 
sample of data. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So let's go back to preview here. Wait for that to load. It's still loading. I can see that up here. Okay. Okay, and let's scroll back up here and grab that latest sample that I just submitted through. Load more, looking for submission C. So there we go, we got first and last, hit continue. And let's see here, setup action, that's all good. Test action, test and review. Okay, text, test action test and review. So now we should see item one and item two. Perfect. Okay, let's go back now to that last step here. And let's add in last name. So let's see here. So last name, text. There we go. So there's the last name field. And then if there's any other data that I would have pulled through from that form, in this case, she only had name, email, and phone. But if we were collecting like the website or address or company name or anything like that, we could add that in here too. Once we hit continue, and once we turn on this zap, because we're done, we could go ahead and test and review. So that's all good. That sent that over. So once I turn this on, that's all set up. So now whenever we start running ads to this funnel, the lead information is going to get captured by lead pages, sent from Zapier over to Chirply, and then there's going to be automations that go out automatically for this lead to be able to get hit up with an SMS message and a email message um, uh, a certain period of time after they've opted in. And then we'll see if they convert. All right, guys, if you have any questions, let me know.